Cutisolis, or sunflowers, uh, came through experimentation with a Super 8 camera. I was really interested in uh, multiple expositions uh, in film and the way that it uh, makes different times and different subjects uh, interact with each other within the same frame. So also my wife uh, created the little circles to, to mask the lens, uh, which gave me the way uh, to create uh, the three multiple expositions that you see in the film. Well, uh, there's the, the, um, the practical reasons in Super 8, the, that Super 8 you can't have sync sound. So it, it becomes an obstacle that you have to overcome. It says that part of using Super 8 is that you know that sound won't be in sync and so you think of ways of telling stories or uh, depicting reality, not using sound. But more so from that, um, it goes along with the idea of the multiple expositions that, that this is a, a, a visual uh, experience that's going on uh, through the Super 8, through the multiple expositions, and um, adding sound would, would not add to that. Well, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, I just know from my world, uh, which is Super 8 uh, in, in analog film, it's people interested in the image and also interested in uh, editing and montage. Right, I mean, telling a story through visuals, but uh, to go back to the Super 8, we have one cartridge. We, we really focus on having one cartridge, which is three minutes and 12 seconds and then using that as an entity within itself so everything you shoot you think about what you shot before what you're going to shoot and in the end that three minute uh, film is your product and that becomes your your work and so our specifics are thinking about the image and uh, the editing within those three minutes and this in our country it's not here in Argentina it's not uh, viable at all. Uh, I make the films uh, from money I receive, from the money I have. Uh, so this is the, where my money goes. The money I have goes towards making my films. I had uh, uh, some short films play in Canada recently and that was the very first time I ever received uh, payment for a film that I had in a festival. So I think other than that, I have never made money on a short film. But uh, there, is a, there is a collection there, there's a unity, there's an association of experimental filmmakers here in Argentina, and we're organizing and we're looking towards uh, these questions. But we also organize small screenings where we project in Super 8. Um, but I think we've only uh, charged one or two of these uh, events. And it was really just enough to cover the cabs, getting us to the place and moving the, the projectors. Other than that, but we haven't made any money. Since I moved here uh, to Argentina, I'm originally from the United States. When I would make these silent films in the United States, I would just send them to festivals through websites and things like this. And uh, I had no idea about audience reaction. You, you send it off to a festival, you receive a mail that it played at the festival and that's it. But since I moved here in Argentina, we I'm part of a group now where we organize screenings and we project our silent films uh, live, uh, sometimes with music, live music. Uh, but we're there behind the projector projecting our movies and we're there with the audience and we can see the reaction and we can talk to the people afterwards and uh, and the people come out you know the which is really interesting you know so it'll be a Friday night there'll be some rock shows or music shows and then people will go see uh, Super 8 projections or uh, experimental film projections and the people come out and it seems to be a good show up yeah Uh, so, uh, actually, I'm now making films with dialogue uh, with this camera here that I just recently uh, acquired uh, because it's Super 16 and it has Crystal Sync which allows me to synchronize dialogue. 
And it's, yeah, it's a completely different world. It's almost too easy. You can express an idea too easily by having someone say it uh, on with synchronized sound. And it's actually, it has been harder for me to make this. I think it's a great advantage, but it's become difficult for me because it just seems too easy. Uh, with Super 8 and with the non-audio uh, uh, storytelling, you have to tell your stories in a way that is more challenging for me and in that way is more interesting to me. In, in the ability now that someone can just speak what they're saying, uh, it, it's too free for me and, it, uh, and it, it causes me not to be able to work in that medium so hard. So Not yet. It was very difficult because the uh, the the way that I did it, it required a lot of planning planning out in advance. Is that we had to make the different masks the correct size of the lens, and that when I remove one, it doesn't it you know takes over the place of the next one for the shot that I'm going to take. And then after every uh, time I filmed filmed the roll. Uh, I would have to rewind the film, so I would have to cut open the, the uh, Super 8 uh, cartridge and then rewind it by hand and then start again. Every time you do one of these steps, there's a possibility of error of coming in. Um, but in the end, it, it came out quite well. And there's also the, the problem of not knowing how the images are going to communicate with each other. You can uh, plan it out more or less, but uh, usually the, the dialogue that happens within the film is by chance. Uh, there's one happy accident where there's me filming myself on screen, and really, the, I did plan it a little bit, but that was mostly uh, luck.